Whenever COVID-19 hit then, we had to really change to a contact plan. Um, because START, we work with vulnerable young people, and um, it was really important that we kept our contact up with the young people. Um, so I was thrown into a completely different way of working. We're used to going face to face, working with these young people. So then I had to really be really innovative and start thinking about how can I engage these young people in a fun way. The group of men, young men that I work with, they um, change their mobile phones quite a bit. So they're quite hard to keep engaged. So I knew that Zoom was not going to work with them. So what I did was I started to use social media and I went on and we did, um, I made up resource packs and we made up minute to win it challenges. Um, we did um, cooking challenges, we did um, Smarties challenges with a straw. And then what we tried to do is what we were trying to do is engage them with their families as well. So they could do it on a one-to-one -one or they could actually do it with brothers and sisters. So it was engaging the family. Um, I also um, did challenges with art therapy. Um, so what I did was I, try, I gave them um, sort of adult drawings. I delivered another resource pack with some art things in it. Um, some of them did participate in this and some of them did it. Um, another challenge I did was I gave them a whole load of blue bin stuff and I asked them to create a boat. Um, and what we did was we gave them points for a boat that somebody that could hold something. So we gave them Lego men to put inside it. Um, it had so it had, we gave them a criteria of who would score the most points and it worked really well and the young people really you know to be honest with you they surprised me about how they engaged with all of this then also with the eat well live well service this allowed me to engage with the families which was brilliant because then I was able to build up a really good relationship with family members of the young people so I was at their house every week and it also kept me real in the young people's lives because when you're on social media they maybe don't see you but through Eat Well Live Well I was able to go out every week and speak to them and social distance obviously at their front doorstep but this for me was brilliant because the young people were just delighted to see you and it really proved to me how they rely on their youth service and how they rely on their youth workers. Okay so some of my highlights would be um, how the young people responded to me um, for me, I have built up a brilliant relationship with them. Um, before, I'd only started working with them, but through the pandemic, I've been able to build on a really positive and trusting relationship. For me, I've, I struggled with it because you couldn't do the face-to-face. -face. It was all Zoom. Young people weren't happy with Zoom, so I took myself out to their garden gates, met them, they were at the door, I was at the garden and met them that way. I delivered their Eat Well boxes and I had conversations with them. Got to know a lot of parents a lot more. Uh, engaged with them on a, a daily basis. Just making sure that they were alright and if they needed anything I was there. A lot of them felt very cut off from everyone, from their friends. They didn't have the contact with their friends. Parents were finding that young people were having a lot more meltdowns, especially young people that had maybe autism, they weren't coping with it as well as other young people were. Um, I think the main thing was the isolation, the boredom, not being able to, to communicate. They had their devices where they can communicate with them, but it was the face to face. But we started doing bingo, which we found worked really well. Now the prizes weren't massive prizes, they were getting bags of sweets, but they engaged with you. They had something to do, it was something completely different and you could bring all ages in with it. I was with the Stay Connected team. I opted to go and do it. I found at the start it was very, very slow because young people were saying they didn't want to, to make the initial phone call. They didn't want to make the initial referral because they didn't know who they were going to speak to. But then we went on to the Eat Well. So there was a lot of referrals come through from the Eat Well. So we had to then contact the parents I made some good contacts through it uh, with young mothers that felt very, very isolated. They were very alone. They had no one to speak to. They were in their own wee cocoon at home with young children. And it was like a lifeline, but I got so much out of it. I still now keep in contact with those parents. 
I have learned how to deal with things straight away. And it, uh, if something threw at me, I'll come up with a, a solution. Young people have been phoning me and it's even just arranging to go out and meet them for five minutes, just two metres apart. But it's thinking on your feet and knowing what you have to do and knowing that there's always someone else there that you can rely on. I think in youth service we tend to try and do everything ourselves. But I think that for me a big learning point was there's other people there. The most important thing for me was that we were also connected to our staff teams and that presented itself um, as being very important to me as a youth worker. I always found uh, pre-COVID uh, as a centre-based youth worker you were working in isolation quite a bit and then when you came to your team meetings um, you were probably listening to other people's issues whereas through the, the COVID experience um, and especially you know being part of the Eat Well Live Well scheme uh, our team was more connected with each other. We were working together, we were supporting each other, we were listening to each other, but as well as that, we were collectively meeting the needs of the young people that we engage with. You were learning on your feet, um, and thinking on your feet as well, and I think that let me see that the staff were obviously uh, being willing to make themselves available to whatever needs were emerging. And as young people presented themselves to us and we were listening to them on the phone or through the digital platforms that were available to them, obviously it was giving us a better understanding of how the whole COVID experience and the lockdown experience was affecting them. And I think as a staff team, we learned to manage that very well. well definitely the biggest highlight for me was being involved in the Eat Well, Live Well scheme at Technavon Youth Centre. Again, uh, you know, it reflects the education Authority Youth Service values of openness, respect, reflection, responsibility, excellence and equality. And that was very much highlighted throughout the Eat Well Live Well scheme. Well, first of all, it lets us see that there's other ways of doing youth work. Again, as I said earlier, um, obviously there's a wee bit of fear and anxiety around using these platforms. But as a team, we were able to work through that and we were well supported by our senior management throughout that process. It also lets us see as, as a service that you know, we are moving forward and looking at different ways, innovative ways of how we in, can engage with our children and young people. And I think most of all, our children and young people recognise the value of what we're actually doing. My most significant accomplishment was being able to support other staff and being able to ask for their help when I felt that I needed it. Well, Stay Connected, it was a medium for us to be able to engage with young people, especially those that were most vulnerable, and it allowed us the opportunity to make sure that we had a presence and that we were relevant to these young people. I think the parents were quite surprised in that uh, they weren't expecting this, especially during lockdown. You know, they were expecting, yes, the usual, that we could signpost them or we could give them, you know, a chat or have a little conversation with them to try and help them with how they were coping or not coping, obviously, in a lot of cases. But I think they just were really impressed that we'd went that extra step and that we'd actually looked at the young person as an individual and their needs. What I found from it was that the hunger that was out there was really evident, so it was on also the need for personal interaction. And I think that really shone through that the young people, yes, social media plays a major part in their lives and it has been a, a vacuum where we've been able to use, you know, to engage with young people, but I think they've got to the stage where they realise that they really miss social interaction among their friends and indeed among the youthful staff. When, you know, we were all cast into a situation that nobody had experienced before and it was, the biggest fear was, were we able to provide the support to the young people that we needed to do, you know, and it was a case of how do we do this, you know, do we reinvent the wheel, do we look at new innovative ways of connecting with young people and it was trying to get that reassurance across to young people that we were there even though maybe not in the physical way that they would normally associate us. We came up with the idea, there was myself, Alan and Emer in the mid Ulster team and we came up with the two ideas, one was that we do the mid Ulster talent contest 
Now that really surprised us, we had 17 entrants, but at the finish we had a final vote and there was 1,500 votes cast, which was amazing, so it was so, it showed a really big buy-in to that and the talent on show was amazing, so it was, I am. Um, second one was, it really, I really enjoyed it because it really was a family oriented one and we came up with the idea of a virtual walk from Mullenhead to Mizzenhead. So we did and we attracted 120 people to do that and the way it was done was each participant walked 5k per day and it was just a whole thing to do with the five ways to well-being and that so we introduced that and it was with mental health and um, there was eight participants in each team so there was and so we completed 40 kilometers each day so we did for 15 days and the interaction there was amazing. We have obviously had to look at new ways of engaging with young people and engaging with the families. I think this has given us an opportunity to actually engage more so with parents and parents have been given the opportunity to realise what we really do provide and that the children aren't going to the centres or going to their groups and just being dropped off and the young people benefiting from them. Parents and families as a whole are now starting to realise why we're there, what we do and obviously the service that we provide and why we provide that service. The initial stage is to stay connected. Um, I was asked to be a part um, of the, the team for representing Derry um, and the initial stages was, I'm not going to lie, it felt like working in a call centre um, because you were constantly getting phone calls and having to get used to a new system. Uh, but once you got the flow of things and kind of got that work going, it, it became a lot easier and, and realised that that was the new face of youth work. Um, for me, what stood out was the amount of phone calls that were coming on from families as opposed to the young people. Um, we found that young people weren't very open to the fact that they wanted to be registered to talk to a youth worker, uh, but the families were very worried about their children. The biggest challenge was the fact that we don't get to see them face to face. Um, for us, the, the Circle of Courage model was uh, a big emphasis in our work before lockdown, even more so now, um, and we didn't see how that was going to work um, over COVID providing a sense of belonging, mastery, responsibility and generosity. But with the online platforms, um, being able to have the work phones and being able to WhatsApp young people uh, with parental permission, um, to actually have engagement in certain programs that we were running, like step challenges, um, art programs, that we were able to blast messages out to young people. That kind of created that sense of belonging um, with the tasks we were given, a wee bit of mastery. Um, and generosity was given back to the younger siblings within the, the household. Um, and obviously then the responsibility was that they had to um, be present every, whether it was online, um, during the week they, they get the tasks and move forward uh, in that way. So that was a big challenge for us was to, to get that set up in the, in the instance in the very start. And we found that over COVID, whether it's been on State Connected or any programs that we're doing specifically ourselves, that the teams are becoming stronger, the partnerships are becoming stronger and nobody is holding their work as precious to me anymore. It's ours as a service uh, and the work's everybody's and we're there to help as much as we can. Face to face youth work happening now so it's all virtual. So that was the biggest change for me because especially coming in from the pathways, I was in the centre working and it's usually working with young people face to face, getting involved in just genuine conversation and genuine conversation and for now it's all we're social media and over online platforms, so it's a big change than what I was used to from growing up. But now you looking back, it's your work, you always have to adapt to the needs of young people. So that was just another part of our job now, is that we have to adapt and use online services, which looking back at it now, it is working. At the start, I think for me anyway, it was, I didn't think it was going to work. I thought young people weren't going to get involved they didn't want to. But over the last few months, the engagement levels have went up. Now young people are getting a lot more involved in it. So, uh, so throughout the, the last couple of months, we've been engaged with our, our core group of young people that we used to work with within the centre. So we've been engaging now in like online challenges, like virtual walking challenges, art programmes, transition programmes too for primary sevens moving on the first year. So we've kind of just talked about what we would have done on the youth club. 
in Strider Basti turn it on an online service that we can still get involved with young people without putting them at risk. It's done some good stuff for the youth service, but I still think that young people come to youth clubs for that engagement and them relationships. And they're a lot harder to evolve over social media and over online platforms. And like even for me as an adult and as a worker, sometimes I dread online stuff, and you know, it's just not personal. So I think that's the biggest change for me is that it's taken away some of that face to face interaction that young people come to youth clubs for. Like, like our young people come to our clubs seven nights a week. They get out and talk to our their friend groups, talk to us, get involved in activities and take, take on new challenges. Definitely, there's still loads of outcomes in regularity, especially the, the circle of courage stuff. That young people are still staying connected. They present that sense of belonging with the youth service. So that sense of belonging, they thought they lost at the start when the club was closed. But we really prove for the online platforms that they, they still have us there for support. So that sense of belonging is still very strong. I, they're, they're losing out in that fist to fist, but they're still gaining a lot through the online stuff. They're still staying connected. They're still getting involved in different stuff online. And so for me, yeah, for me the, the biggest accomplishment for me was getting over that fear doing the online stuff. At the start, I just, like, I don't want nothing to do with it. I was like, it's, it's going to, I think it's going to work. I'm not really looking forward to it. But after a few weeks, it was like, no, this is the new fish of work. It's, I'm on a training program. I'm only learning, I'm only at that. So, and I think for me, work with young people too. It's really show elements of we can adapt to change. Why can't you? So I think after lockdown that the online side of youth service still has to stay working because we're reaching out to young people that we've never spoke to before or never reached out to and they're using that online because so they don't like going you know, at fist to fist might scare some of people so the online stuff's more comfortable which is a big gap in the youth service for the last few years because we never did it. They always think that the fist to fist is better but for some young people the online stuff so I think after lockdown and from what we've learned is that the online and the stay connected stuff should continue going as well, as long as the as well as the face to face contact as well with young people. Are. So the, yeah, the, so the difference is um, has been has been massive. Um, just in that there's there's not that physical, personal interaction. You're not looking right into someone's eyes or or having a laugh with someone or um, or opportunities for deep and meaningful sort of stuff around a, a table. I actually wondered how youth workers could be purposeful in that environment. Um, I had my doubts about how successful that, that could be. Um, be involved in um, the Stay Connected calls, um, uh, two, two referrals which are still ongoing. Um, and I have, and with the collaboration from those, those young men, um, we've tried to make it as purposeful as, as possible. I think what youth workers have, have proved that we can be adaptable and flexible um, and try to make the best of, of the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Um, I, think, I think youth service has provided some um, much needed support, guidance. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of young people out there who um, lockdown would not have suited them. Um, maybe being in a in a, around their family um, for, for so long. We've all had a lot of time during this lockdown to take five. For myself, um, whenever I, I was talking about the, the sort of fighting my rhythm, f for me, whenever I, 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 I found a purpose, um, the, the, the music thing, the, um, the video production sort of stuff, um, I, I can quite happily work for hours on end um, and, and, and work on those things and get great joy and delight that having seen something finished, it's a great sense of achievement and satisfaction. I think youth workers um, uh, have a particular set of, that sounds like me and Mason, they've got a particular set of skills, but they're, uh, youth workers tend to be very adaptable and flexible um, and want to diversify their practice and, and, and can thrive in that in these new challenges, working with outside of their, not their remit, but what they usually do. And I, and I think um, for, for some people, even though it's been challenging, um, lockdown has given some youth workers, an like myself, to do things that um, they are personally interested in. Um, so when COVID-19 kind of hit the country, 
Um, and we were asked to shut our doors. We were kind of in a state of limbo that we weren't too sure what we were supposed to be doing through the Eat Well Lavelle scheme then. Um, it's part of that then we're packing up the boxes, delivering to young people across the area. So across ABC, we are delivering to at least 600 young people, um, over 300 families across the area every week. Um, and that has been immense in terms of the impact it has on the families um, and those young people. And then within the last month or so, then we've moved on to our online provision through Zoom. So we're working with young people then who weren't involved in neighbourhood renewal, weren't involved in Eat Well, Live Well, and trying to connect the rest of our members together so that they all still feel part of the youth centre and youth provision. Um, I think the biggest highlight for me has been being able to give back to our young people. Um, young people come to us and come to our youth centres or we're going to them on the street. But to go to that young person's house, we're on their turf and we're seeing what they're really faced with. So beforehand we're working with young people who have experienced domestic violence in their home, who have experienced mental health problems with their family members themselves, such a massive range of different things happening to them. So that connection that we've built on that doorstep and been allowed to connect through the families through delivering parcels each week has been phenomenal. I think um, a lot of families and a lot of parents and a lot of cars don't understand fully what youth service is still. And I think this opportunity has been immense in showing that. Um, I think we've had some really successful youth work interventions with young people. Some very positive um, things have been gained for young people. So for example, their confidence resilience through the online provisions, through their challenges they set every week, and even through the independence of being able to go in and make their own lunch without having to disturb whoever's at home looking after them as well. Um, and I think that widens into the family as well so that the family who have no money coming in or the family who are really struggling, the children aren't going back to mum and dad and saying we're hungry, what can we get to eat? It's there for them. They can do that themselves, that self-reliance is there. So that is more, I think as well through the online provisions, we've been really good at building the young people's optimism for the future. This is a really uncertain time for everybody. And I think for our young people who are always on the streets and always out with their friends to have to go through that lockdown experience must have been so traumatic for some of them. Um, I definitely think we're going to be facing we go back to our own provisions with a lot of mental health and well-being concerns um, and a lot more resilience building for our young people. I think for the young people who are now transitioning from P7 to first year, um, as I said before, this has been a massive thing having to be locked down um, and a massive thing for them to experience and for them to now transition to a new school and not knowing whether they're going back full time, two days, whether they're with their friends, without their friends. It's something that we're providing to through the online platform, so like transitions programs, resilience programs, confidence building and those kind of stuff too. So it's been really, really, really handy. Um, and as I say, I think there could have been a lot of things done in the background beforehand um, to ensure that everyone has access to it. So we, ha we heard that our centres were shutting, which meant that a lot of my programs um, were on hold. Um, and then I was redeployed onto the Stay Connected service. But because the Stay Connected service was very quiet at the time, um, I offered my service to the Eat Well, Live Well um, distribution hub in Tignalvin. So I'm now based there and I help out with the packing and deliveries. Um, and I would deliver to the young people in the Arma area and the wider areas such as Newry and Bangor. Um, and recently there I was able to finish my OCN with the young people um, over Zoom. So that was really good to be able to do that. Um, it was a challenge at the time, at the start, but uh, as, as we got through it and done our quizzes and activities alongside it, you know, it was actually really successful and the young people really enjoyed it. Right. Um, one of the highlights for me has definitely been the chance to develop on the relationships with the young people um, and their parents and carers or their social workers. Um, you know, it's really opened our eyes with the young people and seeing how vulnerable they actually are and what their living conditions are when we're at their door. Um, some of the young people we deliver to are actually living in care or um, supported living accommodation. So I would visit them and it's not just a case of you know dropping the box off and leaving again. Like I would, I would give a half an hour of my time to those young people and just be there to listen and check in with them, see how they are. And sometimes we are the only, young, are the only people that them young people will engage with. So knowing that that conversation might have an impact on their day is really is really nice. Um, so the links that I've made with the social workers as part of the Eat Well Live Well service has been great. 
uh, they actually contact me now to see you know what we could do together to support them um, and then just seeing how the parents are actually valuing what we do because before this you know some parents didn't understand what you know what the service was about and now I think they're really starting to grasp that and see that because of what we're doing to help through this pandemic and um, you know we're putting ourselves out there as well and um, so because of COVID-19 and the impact that has had some of the young people that I would work with and um, have found themselves living in unfamiliar places and um, so they're they don't live in the catchment area of Abbey Centre now but I find it really important that it's me that delivers those packs to them. So I've the likes of young people living in Newry and Bangor and I would travel to them every week. So there is plans that they will be coming back to the RMI area um, and hopefully by the time we have our centres back open, you know, they'll, they'll be back. Um, but at the minute I'm still staying in contact with them and I'm involved in them in all our online programmes and um, in the neighbourhood renewal programmes that I'm running and also the Well Live Well service. Um, I think the experience of lockdown has been very isolating for young people and services um, because they just we're so social and we're always together and we're always planning to do projects and that was all just cut off as a, of a shock to the system. They've been missing friends and family so they have, they said it's been a strange time um, and the, as well as isolation they was said to me and I feel it too, the loss of togetherness and the closeness that we all had and some of us that don't like social media we couldn't really communicate to each other. Zoom calls there every week so we have we'd all Zoom call and we just ch chat and talk about lockdown and how we're getting on and everything we've been doing over this past while. Socialising. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody again and uh, getting back to projects and normality with the routine as well. Um, yes it was expressed to me um, by other members of my youth council. They're afraid of other people not following the rules correctly and that having a negative impact and possibly stopping um, youth services back and running again. They've also expressed to me um, like physical barriers that we can't all have the same friendships and for new people coming into the youth council and other youth groups it's going to be harder for them to bond with each other that we have done in previous years because we are constantly together and we're doing we're meeting outside of the groups and we're taking part in activities and trips together which we won't be able to do because of this so yeah definitely those are concerns. Similarly they're fearful that events will not be the same and they won't be able to take part in the same projects we once did and that might have a negative impact on the group overall. Well as everyone knows the main problems we have when we're first starting a new job is engaging young people. Uh, well, face to face doing detached work is a good mechanism that we use. Unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury in the fact that we were in lockdown. So it was done via conversations with existing workers within the area, conversations with the part time staff, trying to gauge um, the young people already involved, trying to get them involved with my project uh, through Zoom calls and um, using the Stay Connected service plus the Eat Well Live Well which I was delivering weekly in the Kakil and Mourns area. Engaging in the whole um, technology, uh, I'm, very, I'm a, very proactive when it comes to using social media, getting the young people involved through the, the Facebook posts and, or Facebook pages and things like that. So, I was very, I was an advocate for using the Zoom calls, getting them set up and running. Um, I see the benefit in continuing this service with, especially with our T-Buck programs, it, it opens up a, a broader range that we can engage young people from a, a, broader, a broader area. So maybe Kilkeel um, doing a program with Belfast young people or even further Felix Derry, where with the Zoom calls we can engage that way and, and then come together as a, as a big camp in the summer or mid-term breaks and stuff like that. Well I was involved in the Stay Connected in the initial phone calls with the parents and um, the only issue I found with that was I was dealing with young people or parents and stuff from the Belfast area and I had very little experience of working in that area so it would have been more beneficial even from the Kilkeel area or my previous job dealing with them issues. I know that maybe they haven't, didn't come on board to the Stay Connected service on the flip side then, the eat well, live well, the conversations we have with the parents 
the ones that are getting it are so grateful. To for, it's just something something very simple like a, the food box that we're providing, but they are really appreciative of it. And um, especially now it's continuing throughout the summer as well that they're they're that some young people are coming, or some parents are coming to us. Oh, is there anybody else that needs it? So they're they're realizing the the how great a service we're, we're doing with the Eat Well Live Well, and they would like other people to be involved with it. Again, like I said, we have come on board leaps and bounds with our social media, with the caddy team coming on board, with the Zoom calls, with the Stay Connected. It's great, um, great to see it in operation and great to see how well it works. And I can only see it going forward and being a vital cog within our delivery service. So kind of. Yes and no. I think the. Our bread and butter is on the ground, face-to-face -face youth work. I'm sure every worker has been itching to get back out and even just doing simple projects. We're involved in doing a, an art project and it's only a small group of young people, like three or four young people. But we're doing that throughout the division um, and hopefully that, that'll come together as a big video that we can showcase through our social media as well. Um, but it's only recently that we've been sort of working with them small groups and you see the, the young people are more engaging more engaging face to face than they are on a Zoom call. The young people have surprised us in the fact how well they've coped and stayed in. At the very start, how young people you heard it on the, on the radio and stuff like that, how a lot of the young people weren't going out for enough and lockdown was getting um, relaxed and stuff. There was all the negative things about them all going to the beaches and bloody bridges and stuff like that. But the, prior to that, they, their resilience, the Actually, just following advice was was the way that, that not surprised us, but reaffirmed how good our young people can be.